Another evening has come again, although we mourn the death of nine people with some still trapped in the building there. My name is Gifty Ando Apia. Welcome to join us at 8. In the headlines, rescue operations are underway at the site of the collapsed Melcom shopping complex here in Accra with the Ghana-Israel expertise collaboration. Volta River Authority says current ongoing load shedding exercise will end by end of December as the As a nation mourns the loss of life in the Malcolm Building collapse disaster, Joy News brings you the story of another weak structure at Armenia in Accra. In business, Malcolm shops across the country close to shoppers and customers due to the disaster that occurred yesterday. On the international front, two Chinese construction workers killed by unknown gunmen in the northeast of Nigeria who stole their vehicles. All these and more coming up in the next one hour. Your election headquarters on TV, radio and online. Election headquarters supported by Star Ghana. And Infobox. Welcome to the details of those headlines and many more. The Israeli rescue team has arrived in the country to help with rescue efforts. The eight team rescue team has already started work. Here is an earlier interview with the Israeli ambassador to Ghana and leaders of the rescue team. That we are getting great cooperation from the Ghanaian authorities, from the Ghanaian government, from the Accra Municipal Assembly, and especially Mayor Van der Puy. And uh, as you could have seen, our team just came here. They are getting briefed by the Ghanaian teams. Of course, this is a Ghanaian operation. We are just here to assist in whatever we can. I, I, our, our team is very prepared. Our team is very, very, very experienced. They know what they've been doing. This is not the first time they've assisted across the world in doing such an operation. Hopefully, they'll be able to help. But we brought uh, basically uh, search um, um, machines. Okay. We're using sound. Mm -hmm. We're using vision. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, sound waves mm -hmm. in order to look for people who are trapped inside. Okay. Basically, we have equipment who's able to uh, locate movements mm -hmm. within a building. And this is what we did a couple of minutes ago uh, when we silenced the area. Mm -hmm. We silenced the area completely. And then we call people. We tell them if they hear us to knock. And we use our equipment to see if there's any movement. And it can go down deep, a couple of meters down to see if there's any movement there. And still on the disaster, some architects and engineers also visited the site of the disaster to get first-hand information that will be beneficial to their investigation on what might have caused the collapse of the building. I think basically what we need to do is to have a physical inspection of the building. Uh, we've gone around, we have taken a few measurements, a few dimensions. We have looked at the materials that have been used, uh, both the concrete uh, part as well as the iron rods part. We have seen some few block works and screening, all the materials that have been used on this building. On this matter, we are here as we finish with the investigation, we'll come out with the final uh, re results elaborate uh, report for you. When they find a little plot of land, they want to maximize the use of it. So they're tending to go up. But are they using the right professionals? We are ready for it if everybody will go to the right professionals. A properly trained and certified firm of architects or individual architect, properly trained and certified engineer, structural, electrical, mechanical. What, what is the cost of this collapse compared to the cost of getting something properly? People, unfortunately, don't look at the things like that. President John Dramani Mahama, for the second time, visited victims of the Malcolm Mall disaster at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital.
From Dramani, Mahama sympathizing with some of the victims who were who survived, who survived that disaster. Indeed, they must be grateful to God for sparing them their lives. And indeed, as a father of the nation, he's playing that role, saying sorry to them, consoling them for what they've gone through. So these are live visuals from the site of the disaster. As you can see, the rubble is there. We have our reporter who is, who is there on the ground. We're going to find out from her any updates that must have come up. Hello, Yafoswa, can you hear me? Hello, Gipi. Yes, yeah. Hello? Yeah, Gipi. Run us through an update if you have any. Okay. Um, rescuers are still on the ground trying to rescue people in there. And then... Um, uh, the information I'm getting on the ground is that there are still dead bodies in there. They are seeing them, but they are not able to get through to them. So they are cutting through the debris to get the dead bodies underground. And then, as you know, there are still curious onlookers all around trying to get information. And then we have some family members too around who are still not um, getting through to their family members. Um, I spoke to one lady, Wendy, who says... Um, She's ro roamed to some hospital since yesterday, and she's not getting through to her relatives, and she still feels that she's still trapped under there. And then um, she says she's been to the mall to also find out if she, she's there, but there's no information still getting through to her, and then she's been there since um, yesterday. And then she hopes that she will get through, and then even if she finds a dead body, um, that would be okay with her. If they... Hello? Yes, Hello? yeah. So you mean that the people who are trapped in there, we cannot confirm if any of them are alive. Hello. Okay, yeah, for Hello? Swa, yeah, for Swa, our reporter there on the ground of the disaster, giving us live updates on what has been happening there. Quite a heartbreaking sight there to think that someone might be under those heavy concrete. But we'll take a break here. You're welcome back. Many thanks for staying with us. The news continues. As the nation still deals with yesterday's Melcom shop collapse at Achimota, three persons have been arrested by the Adenta District Police for working on a dangerous building even after being warned in July to stop work. Atamra here, a suburb of Adenta in the Greater Accra region, stands this five-story building with hanging concrete pillars and iron rods. 
These stone tiles are also being used to cover up the weak-looking blocks used for the building to deceive prospective tenants and authorities. According to authorities, it was a twin building, but one of them collapsed about five months ago, and the owner was notified to stop construction at the site, but work is still ongoing. Instead of halting construction, makeshift pillars have been constructed to hold the remaining building, which experts say is even more dangerous. One, the first one did not stand. It means the structure, structurally, is no good. Um, you don't need um, anybody to tell you that when you look at even the, 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 the quality of the material that they use for the construction, it's a suspect. So um, when you look at that one from first hand, before you can carry it through any scientific research, basically you know that um, the material is of poor standard. Resident engineer of the Adenta Municipal Assembly, Victor Mensah, told Joy News all efforts to meet with the owner to find a way forward has proved futile. To no avail, um, the owner of the property did not respond. Um, we have several um, requests for him to come and assist us to know. Unfortunately, some time ago, one of the listings came down, which we came here again. We wrote on the walls, we gave sermons. Um, the property owner failed to show up. After persisting this thing, um, we thought there's a need. That's why we informed the police to come and assist us to get um, the people so that we can get um, the owner of the property. Uh, the property will not assist us in our investigation. The police did not get easy access to the premises when they got there at 9 a.m. Thursday morning and had to call for reinforcement. So I did to my crime officer and the task force team. When they got to the police, they refused to open them. They knocked, knocked, knocked. Nobody was, was responding. They have to scale over the wall and enter the yard. When they got to the yard, they met three guys who were working inside the yard on the collapsed building. So which you can see, you know, you've been to the scene. So they were brought. DSP Stephen Kufia Hiatafu said they're going to hand over the arrested men to the assembly to take the necessary action against them. Some members of the owner's family who were at the scene said the man in question is on admission in the hospital, hence his inability to meet with the building engineers when asked to. Well, we hope it doesn't come down anytime soon when anyone. Hundreds of homes were flooded in 2008 and thousands of people displaced in the Keta municipality after high tidal waves swept over that coastal area. One of such communities is Akplo, Akplo Wotoko. Four years on, Seram Abla de Souza visited the area and has filed a report. According to geographical landmark, this town, Akplotoko, should have been on this side of the road in the sea due to erosion and sea floods. Akplotoko is one of the 35 communities cut off by sea floods. Homes, a church and schools were destroyed at Akplotoko in the devastation over the years. When the news team got to the town, these children were seen playing around as the grown-ups engaged in idle chatter, something they wouldn't have been able to do some years ago. Charity and Richard witnessed the sea floods and erosion. This thing happens about seven or eight years ago now. And in Jusue, many properties around the area here. And people were just running away, getting to other cities and everywhere. We have seen many changes now. And now the, th the things are going well. Okay. The, th the city defense project is now getting us to the higher place. At a cost of $30 million, a coastal protection project is being undertaken to control such occurrence. Groins 150 meters apart have been built to serve as a buffer to prevent the sea waves from hitting the shore. 
Sand from the sea is gathered between the boulders, thus allowing the people to continue with their fishing activities. Gabions have also been used to secure the shore and 50,000 rocks arranged on them to trap the sand that would come from the sea. We are doing a second phase, which will cost another $20 million. So altogether, we'll spend about $50 million on this project. But the results are very good. We have restored the road. We have protected the coastline. And uh, we have moved the power lines back. The communities uh, towards Adan, which are part of the constituency, now have revived in terms of their socioeconomic life. The project also includes the construction of seven goings 80 meters into the sea to protect the boulders along the shoreline. Well, we understand there's some new development at the Malcolm disaster site. We'll cross over to talk to our reporter there, Yafuswa Jemfi. Yeah, tell us what's the new bit. Hello, Gifty. Yeah, I've been able to talk to the leader of the eight member team from Israel, uh, Major Rotin Azulai, who said um, right now they've been able to locate four people who are trapped underground. And they are not too sure whether they are alive or not. But they've been able to drill the fourth and the fifth floor and then they hope that by two hours time they'll be able to get through to them. So that is the information I have on the ground now. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Do uh, keep monitoring what's happening there and keep giving us that information. We'll take another breather here. Time now for the business report. The November 15 deadline promised by the President John Dramani Mahama during the IEA debate at Tamale to end the current load shedding exercise in the country will not be possible. A press conference held by the three power providers in the country, the VRA, the ECG and Gridco, said Ghanaians will have to wait again for another three weeks until the ending of November before enjoying full power supply to their respective homes and businesses. And this is because the Sine, Takradi and Steam Turbine project, which are expected to produce an additional 230 megawatts of power to augment the current capacity in the country, have been completed and is currently in their need of crude oil to power them. Just this week, literally this week, but starting from about a week or two ago, we started to have some problems with fuel supply. Now this week, the, 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 the difference is that there's a formal declaration of force majeure from Nigeria. In other words, crude oil suppliers are saying they cannot get their crude oil from Nigeria until the end of November. That is new. That is new. And a week ago, even three days ago, I was not aware of it. It has pushed out crude oil supply not till the 15th of November, as the president assumed, but by two more weeks after that. The crude will come all right, it's just going to come later. According to the chief executive of the Volta River Authority, Kweku Awache, it costs the authority some $50 million every 20 days to purchase crude oil in order to power the nation. Government intervention in this regard, he noted, was critical. He also underscored the importance of repair works on the West African gas pipeline in ending the load shedding exercise. We do have an expectation that the gas pipeline will be ready in the next four to six weeks, we have been told that. And when that happens, I think uh, uh, the, the major issues of load shedding should really be behind us. We, we do expect that in the next few weeks. And um, I think it's also important to uh, repeat again that we are making additional efforts uh, for uh, election day to make sure that there's more than enough electricity, whether it's in country or out of country, to make sure that there's enough electricity in the country. Director of Procurement at the Electricity Company of Ghana, Robert Dramina, said some of the power outages being experienced in the country are not as a result of the load shedding exercise, but the weakening of switch gears and transmitters. He, however, assured that officials were working around the clock to resolve the situation. Meanwhile, the VRA is seeking to augment the country's power supply to 1,000 megawatts within the next three years, especially with the commissioning of the Bui Hydro Power Project next year. 
Away from energy, let's do some insurance. Now, when a foreign company moves to Ghana, the law allows that, that company to be insured in Ghana. This, in turn, helps develop the insurance industry. Therefore, in the quest to improve the industry, stakeholders are putting in place measures to get foreign direct investment in the country. In Ghana, insurance is perceived as a policy for the elite. But the insurance industry in recent times has been putting measures in place to convince people to trust and take part in various insurance policies. This, perhaps, is the reason agents of insurance companies keep on invading workplaces, markets, religious organizations and schools in a bid to capture more clients. Stakeholders say attitude towards insurance is changing and patronage picking up. The insurance industry is developing. I won't say that it has developed because the knowledge of the importance of insurance is not fully absorbed by Ghanaians. So there is now the need to educate the general public about the importance of insurance for general life. Because definitely you need insurance in every aspect of your life, whether for your life insurance or your properties. Everything you acquire, you need it. Education, you need it. Properties, you need it. So. Uh, we just have to make sure that the educational programs being pursued by the National Insurance Commission now is deepened and extended to every corner of the country. However, to develop the insurance industry, foreign direct investment also plays a key role. In the pursuit of this, the West African Insurance Companies Association, WICA, is organizing an educational conference in Ghana dubbed Harnessing the Effects of Foreign Direct Investment for the Development of the Insurance Industry in West Africa. The conference is expected to encourage foreign investors to invest in Africa with the assurance that their investment is secured when they invest in the five English-speaking West African countries. We stand to make our stakeholders aware that we're trying to bring in investors. We're trying to prepare ourselves, especially the insurance industry in West Africa, trying to prepare ourselves for foreign direct investors to come into our country and invest here. They want to come in, but they're not sure how protected they are. So when we provide this kind of forum, develop our insurance industry, then investors will say, okay, this place is good enough because they have these facilities. I can invest there. I know my investment is protected when I go in there. SNK Davo also touched on insurance in relation to the Malcolm disaster. He emphasized that if companies would adhere to insurance laws, disasters such as the Malcolm building collapse could be avoided. Meanwhile, all the other branches of Melcom stores have closed for business. The Medina branch, Light Industrial Area branch, Atapoka branch, Spinter's branch and the Dansoman branches were all closed to shoppers. Information gathered indicates that all Melcom branches nationwide were closed today as a sign of mourning due to the collapse of the Achimota branch. The directive, however, created some inconveniences for shoppers. For now, it is unclear when the other branches of Melcom will be reopened for business. Shops that we visited today, visibly enough, they've been closed. Nothing is happening. As we speak, we do not know when they will be reopened by the authorities.
Meanwhile, Joy News has been speaking to labor aspects on the effect of industrial action on productivity. Take a listen. These type of things are supposed to be 18th century behaviors uh, because we have the most credible labor law in the world today and uh, employers are duty bound to help educate their workers. Uh, unions are also duty bound to help educate their workers. Uh, training institutions who train people must intensify the training so that we can prevent and have uh, an early resolution of such uh, impasse, if it is to be called impasse at all. Government business across the country was grounded to a halt when members of the Civil and Local Government Staff Association of Ghana, CLOCSAC, embarked on an indefinite sit-down strike. During this period, all visitors to state institutions were not offered any assistance by the staff. Labor expert Austin Gami says the timing for the strike was wrong. This is no issue at all to be raised at this point in time. So you, the workers, however genuine they may have this case, they are creating space for people to believe that they are deliberately doing politics when it might not be so. They haven't, they haven't even made us aware what really the subject matter is, whether they, the two of them, the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, which is supposed to be the spokesperson for government, is saying something different. They are also saying something different, but it's not fair to this nation. In a press statement dated Tuesday, 30th October 2012, Clock cited failed payment of top-up allowance and premium payment after migration onto the single spine salary structure as reason for the strike action. We should not pretend that Ghana is an uh, isolated island somewhere. We live in a global village and people who come here to do business with us do not come here because of our beautiful women, our beautiful roads and our sanitation situation. They have come here to do business to enable them to be profitable and have experience growth. And if people are here to do investment and you refuse to give them assistance, support, service that you are supposed to give as government agencies, you expect a job to be created for your children to, be, to, to do work in Ghana here? We are joking. They also allege the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission since September 2011 to date have not been forthright on the issue. Not to blame anybody, the law has created space that in the unlikely event that you internally are unable to resolve your differences, go to the National Labor Commission. Don't start. It's not fair to the nation. I'm not even thinking about government. I say the nation, Ghana. You are not fair to the nation. You are, you are denying your own children opportunity of uh, employment opportunities. That is the business you are doing. He has therefore encouraged employers to invest in training staff on labor matters. <laughs>
Good evening, my name is Rashidat Kadiri and I have the World Sports News. Let's begin from home with the, the unfortunate news that happened on Tuesday as a high-powered delegation from the Ghana Football Association visited family members of Asamoah and Bafojan following the loss of their mom, Madame Cecilia Love Amwako. The delegation from the FA was led by President Christine Yantichi. Madame Cecilia Love Amwako passed on at the Ridge Hospital in Accra following a motor accident. Kwesi Nyantechi and the other members of the GFA met elders and family members of Bafo and Asamwajan at their residence in Gbawe, a suburb of the nation's capital. Some members of the executive committee, including George Ifriye, Felix Sansong, Lena Adi, Zida Salifu and Premier League Board Chairman Welbeck Abrapia were part of the delegation. The General Secretary of the GFA, Imano Jima, Technical Director Francis Otiakenteng, Assistant coach of the Black Stars, Maxwell Kunedu, team manager, Saban Kwe, Kit manager, Ishmael Hamidu, and Black Satellites Management Committee member, Alaji Hart, were also in attendance. Kwesi Nyantichi spoke on behalf of the nation's football governing body. We are all bereaved. We are all part of the family, and uh, we all share in the grief the family is going through. Uh, it's very unfortunate. So our visit here is just to solidarize with them and then give them hope that there is more life after the death of our mother and that we shall all be around to console one another and live together in peace. Maxwell Konedu spoke on behalf of the Black Stars. Just encourage him to, to move on because uh, we know the pain the family will be going through. The head coach has given him a break for now. Funeral arrangements of Madame Cecilia will be announced in due course. Now, Ghana's ambition to end an almost 31-year continental trophy drought could be giving a major boost if the Football Association steps up the nationality switch process of Arsenal youngster uh, that have ended in the ongoing UEFA Europa League and some of the results. Anzi Makachkala have defeated Liverpool by a goal to nil. Udinese have lost at home by two goals to three uh, against Young Boys Ben. Academica Coimbra two, Atletico Madrid nil. Victoria Plexen four, Hapoel Tel Aviv nil. Fenerbahce two, AEL Limassol nil. Marseille have drawn at home two two against Bayern Munchen Gladbach. Bordeaux one, Maritimo FC nil. Club Brook 2, Newcastle United 2, FC Copenhagen nil, Stuttgart 2, Napoli 4, Nipro Diproskev 2, and then Tottenham Hotspur 1, NK Marisbor nil. Those are the latest results coming in from the UEFA Europa League ongoing in several countries. And with that, I end the sports segment for tonight. Coming up next, we have international. We'll be doing showbiz soon, but before we do that, let's go to the PM Express Studios, find out what Stephen Enti has for us tonight. I think the disaster which took place on Wednesday at the Malcolm uh, Achimoto branch. Currently, we know the numbers. We know that there's still some people trapped in the the rescue team is working hard to bring them out so what we're going to do is to discuss the safety issues about the whole thing what lessons we can learn from it and whether our emergency responses have been up to scratch with such an emergency in the event anything like that happens are we as a country and the institutions of state in a position to bring relief and rescue that's a very important one, and we hope that viewers will tune in and bring you their opinions as well. Thank you very much, Stephen, on Thank that you, brief.
time now for showbiz and in showbiz tonight live band music according to a medical doctor has been identified as a preventive measure for depression and other emotionally related ills for a medical doctor that was motivation enough to set up a live band sport in the heart of kumasi which he manages alongside his private hospital he says running a live band sport is a heavy investment which can easily discourage anyone but he counts it all worth it because of the many people he believes are being held away from depression for these live band lovers midnight is their ideal atmosphere of relaxation here they meet with both unknown and known faces on a very informal note each of the patrons has a reason for being here i'm just here to entertain entertain okay just how fast because you know what i um I've, I've heard about this thing and i came here to just see whether it's true or not and really i'm enjoying yeah he's not a boyfriend i just came here alone i've got i've gotten someone to meet my uncles i've never met before they brought me here we're having a great time i feel so happy at the same time, enjoying with my girlfriend, it's good for me. Don't you think someone will snatch her from me? I know him tell me one natural mystic, superpower, and a man on tea. Well, people finding lovers and meeting uncles for the first time is not why Fresh is here. Fresh is not worried about the loud music and the exposure of his two little boys to alcohol because they are free to make a choice when they are of age. My work is so stressful, and in a way, on weekends, at least, I have to get on with my family, and in a way, I have to get to a place that I think that all my stress be off, and at the same time, the whole of the family will feel all right, and they'll be getting good. So in Kumasi, we were told women come tops when it comes to midnight drinking. But beside being intoxicated by wine, most of the people on the dance floor got themselves intoxicated with this rendition of Amachi Dede's music. On the flip side, not everyone is accustomed to loud and fast live band. Some prefer to take it easy with some sort of cool and sexually explicit lyrics with the right mood. But even in a worship mood, people still like to rock once it is live band music. It is evident that if you want a hot spot in Kumasi, you must be looking out for a live band spot. Oh, 